Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Crypt13 and today I want to talk about and break down the changes to transformative reactions specifically for Swirl. If you guys didn't already know, transformative reactions like Overload, Electrocharged, Swirl, Shatter, they were all recently buffed in the 1.6 patch once your character is above level 60. This buff isn't as simple as it now does one and a half or two times more damage. No, it's, it's not that simple at all. It's actually quite complicated. So in order to explain this, we're going to be diving into the formula changes. And so we're going to get pretty technical and pretty mathy. So strap in because I'm going to try my best to explain how they all work. So first off, let's try to understand how transformative reactions work and swirl reactions work just in general. At a high level, transformative reactions are based solely off of your character's level and elemental mastery. However, the damage can be affected by elemental resistances. Every enemy in the game has some amount of elemental resistance, as well as a mechanic to shred that elemental resistance. Swirl damage does not get boosted by any kinds of damage bonuses. So these are pretty much the main three things that affect the damage of Swirl, as well as artifact set bonuses and anything else in the future, maybe like a weapon, maybe, I don't know. But those three are the main things that affect Swirl damage. So here, is the old formula for calculating the transformative reaction damage your character is going to do based off of their elemental mastery. This percentage is also reflected on the character status screen. And here is the new formula that was calculated from the Kaching mains discord. However, this formula is not perfect and in fact it might change. This formula does not give us the exact damage as we see in the game and I will show you examples of that. But for now it's pretty close so we're just going to use it anyway. Just know that these formulas will always have some slight margin of error. I actually managed to derive a simpler formula that worked pretty well as well, but the margin of error on my formula was a little bit larger. So I'll use the Kitching Mains Discord one since it's what more people agree on. So let's first start off with a level multiplier. This part of the formula here is a huge freaking mess, but thankfully we don't really need to pay too much attention to it because this part of the formula is basically the base damage of transformative reactions at certain character levels. So this part of the formula multiplied by the respective multiplier is what gives you the base damage based on a character's level. So for example, for Swirl, it's 1.2. So if we take 1.2 and multiply the result of this formula, we will get the base damage at say level 80 or level 70 or level 75, etc, etc. And so the reason why I say that this can largely be ignored is just for me personally because I only care about base damage at certain level intervals because in my calculations, that's what I use. Typically, I would use level 70, level 80, or level 90. I don't really care about the levels in between, so I don't need to know the base damages in between there. So all I really need to do is find an enemy, create a swirl reaction, and divide that number by the enemy's elemental resistance to get the base damage at my character's level. It's that simple. And I just have to make sure that I have zero elemental mastery and no artifact set bonuses that are affecting swirl damage. So if we just take a look at the footage here, I am creating a swirl reaction on a ruin guard when I have zero elemental mastery, no artifact set bonuses, and a gene that's level 80. We are dealing 581 damage, and so if we take that and divide that by 0.9, we end up with 645.5 or somewhere around 646. So we can say that the base damage for Swirl at level 80 is 645 or 646. And so if we revisit that table and chart from the Kitching Mains Discord, you will see that we are in fact off by about two points of damage. So there is definitely a small margin of error with this formula. We also don't know how much this margin of error propagates as we get higher elemental mastery, so we have to be careful of that. If I actually had enough elemental mastery to test this table out, I totally would, but I don't have any good elemental mastery artifact pieces on hand, unfortunately. Artifact farming can go suck it. Anyway, something that would be really useful is if someone actually went through every single level and just found the base scroll damage at every single level and compiled that into a table in game instead of using a formula because obviously this formula has that slight margin of error. Then I think that would be a lot more accurate than trying to derive it from a formula. But anyway, that's a whole lot of work. If someone actually does that, then the Genshin community should be eternally grateful 
to you. So since we were able to find the base damage of Swirl in game, let's compare that to the formula's base damage of Swirl. So if we take a look at the table here, you'll notice that there is a table of damage modifiers depending on the transformative reaction. So we'll take Swirl and then we'll take the complicated mess at the end of the formula and multiply those two numbers. That is what's supposed to give us the base damage of Swirl at a particular level. So if I highlight this on my spreadsheet, you'll notice that at level 80, the complicated complicated mess of a formula here comes out to about 540 or 539.68 to be exact. And if we multiply that by 1.2, we end up with 647.6, which is a little bit high. And that would explain why the resulting damage when we include enemy res is a little bit higher than we saw in game, 581 versus 583 calculated using the formula. So let's just keep this margin of error in mind. And you know, again, and this is what most people are agreeing on for what their formula is, so I don't really have much choice but to use it. I also just don't have the patience to go and find the correct formula. So that's the level multiplier part of this formula, explained to the best of my ability, and at the end of the day, the base damage of this formula was the thing that got buffed, and is what you really need to know to understand why the new elemental mastery and transformative reaction buffs are so good. So this part of the formula was just looking at the transformative reaction buffs. So now let's move on to the actual elemental mastery buffs. Elemental Mastery was buffed just the same way as Transformative Reactions in that you will only notice the buffs once you are above level 60 and only when a Transformative Reaction occurs. So this means that Elemental Mastery for Vaporize and Melt is unchanged. So let's take a look at the formula again. This is the old part of the formula that interacted directly with a character's Elemental Mastery. The new formula is supposedly this which was derived from the Kitching Mames Discord, which again is not exact because it's got some margin of error, as I just demonstrated. This part of the formula is reflected in-game on the character status screen, so we can directly see if this formula is correct or not. All we need to do is plug in our Elemental Mastery and do a simple calculation. So let's take my Jane for example. She has only 16 Elemental Mastery and 13% extra Swirl damage on the character status screen. If I plug in 16 Elemental Mastery into the formula, formula, we end up actually only getting 12.7. So clearly, it's already off by a little bit. Let's take my Barbara for example. She has 56 Elemental Mastery. So if we plug that into the formula, we end up with 43.6, which is 0.1% off of what the character status screen says. So this formula gives us results that are a little bit high, but that's okay. It'll be good enough for what we need to do. The reaction bonus here is for any additive percent bonus to your elemental reaction damage. So for example, the four-piece Veritas and Venner gives 60% extra damage. This is simply just added here. Four-piece Thundering Fury, for example, also increases electro-related transformative reactions by 40%. So again, just add 40% here. So just to be clear, these set bonuses are not multiplying your final damage by 60 or 40%, as it might make you believe from their descriptions. It is simply just an additive multiplier that goes right here in this part of the reaction damage calculation. So now let's take a look at how building elemental mastery is now much better than before. Starting with zero elemental mastery, we can see that we don't have that much of a buff in damage, a pretty puny 15% from what it was before at level 80. But as we build more elemental mastery, we start to see the benefits of the buff much better. At 100 elemental mastery and at level 80, we already see a 40% increase in damage. At 200, as we build more, that percent difference increases even more. And then at 500 elemental mastery, we are dealing almost double the swirl damage than we did before. And then finally at 1000, it's now pretty much double the damage. We can see on this line graph here that the gap between the two lines is quite significant. However, there are still diminishing returns as you build high higher elemental mastery. I don't have a chart that illustrates it for the new buffs, but diminishing returns is still a thing. So yeah, that was pretty mathy, but hopefully I made some sense and you were able to follow along with me as I explain how all of that worked. Transformative reactions have been buffed pretty well in the new 1.6 patch, and I hope that this explanation found you well. And if it did, don't forget to hit that like button and maybe even subscribe to my channel. If any of you guys made it this far, seriously, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I will see you guys later.